Hey, I am David for Big Bits, and in this video, we are going to take a look at a couple of new features on TradingView. One with the watch list, and the other is going to be with dynamic alerts, uh, basically dynamic alert messages in the TradingView alert system for your scripts. And we're going to be doing this in Pine. We're going to take a fairly detailed look at it. Uh, I'm not going to dig in too far, but uh, I'll show you how it's done, kind of how it works. And uh, of course, we'll go over the watch list thing first because that was super simple. But if you're interested in joining TradingView with a pro plan, please consider using the link in the description of the video because you'll get $30 towards your paid plan next time. And so will I. Uh, I like to say that in all those because uh, I definitely support TradingView and I want $30 too, right? Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. They have some articles that have been published in their What's New blog. If you go, the menu when you're looking at charts go to what's new and then you can see what they've been posting recently and you can see that they have a new generation of script alerts so i've already clicked on this i've already got this pulled up on the other tab here but we're going to cover these new dynamic alerts next the first thing we're going to look at though is this one this is really simple it's another thing that was added in the what's new section essentially with your watch list you can add an item to your watch list at a specific position. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we have in our watch list here. This is just the default watch list. I don't think I've ever touched this really other than testing this and adding GME. Let's add something below GME. Let's add AMC since that seems to be going right along inside with the GME stuff today. Here we go, AMC Entertainment Holdings, NYSE. That's the symbol we want. and let me go over this one more time and zoom in because it might not be quite so easy to see. Right click the listing in your watch list where you want the new symbol to be added at below. Uh, so when we click here, right click and we click add symbol, we're going to be adding AMC below GME. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, once I click on this, it should add it below there. You can see it did so that's pretty cool a uh, nice little way here to add that to the watch list and if you're curious you can always take a look here at the what's new blog and you can see kind of exactly what you might have missed all right so back to our dynamic alerts which is probably the most important thing uh, that we've had come with alerts in a long time other than the new alert management system they had not terribly long ago and this is something we've been kind of looking for for a long time in the Pine community. What you're going to be, well, what we did want, I should say, is the ability to customize our messages and be more dynamic, as it is uh, referred to here. We wanted more dynamic abilities with our alerts because they did give us placeholders in the alert messages. So you could create custom alert messages and use the little brackets as placeholders for like the close price, the symbol and stuff like that. But really we wanted to have specific messages come through. Like um, it's hard to explain exactly what you would want to say, but so say for example, you have a system where your indicator could create a strong buy, a regular buy, a sell and a strong sell signal. Well, for whatever reason you wanted to make just one alert for that, you would have to have an alert message that would have to be dynamic so that it could change based on the conditions that are going on to tell you whether it's a strong buy or strong sell. Now in the past, what we'd have to do is we have to create a condition, an alert condition for each of those particular settings that you would have. Now you still kind of have to do that in Pine, but now you don't have to force your users to do it. So. Uh, this will make more sense for those of you all who have been following along with Pine. If you haven't, I do have a nice tutorial series. It's probably the most popular one on YouTube if you search Pine Script Tutorials. There will also be a link at the end of this video in the uh, little end scene that I've got there where it shows the recommended videos. It should pop up there, most likely. Um, but if not, just Google Pine Script Tutorials and you'll see that. But let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what we have on the chart here. This is the script that I've copied from them. See, I'm looking at a five second chart and we're doing this little example that they've given us. And let's go back here, take a look. 
they have three examples of this for us. And we're going to start off with this one, which is just simply calling an alert with the message being close is equal to, and we're converting the current closing price to a string or characters of text so that it can print them on the screen. And it's going to do this every bar close, only once at the bar close. So I wanted to take a look and show you here. What I've done is I've actually added, zoom in, I've actually added one for the open as well. And uh, I'll kind of show you how this works and why I added a second one here to the example they had. And I've also commented out the plot for the close. We don't really care too much about the price being plotted on the screen. We can see that with what we have now. So let's go ahead and take a look uh, at how we create an alert for this. So let's zoom in go over here. This is our alerts tab on our navigation. I've already got some set up. I don't really even use them that much anymore, but they are kind of handy when they do fire. Hit create alert. Go to our alert screen. You can see there's a couple different things here. We have a condition, and this isn't for our particular script. So let's select our script that we've created, the simple alert example. And you can see we can do this based on any alert function call. Well, we've got two alert functions within our script. If you go back down here, we've got a close alert and an open alert. And the way that this alert function works with the dynamic alert screen is it's going to show you, uh, it's going to call an alert for each of the alerts that get fired in this particular instance of the script. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it should fire both of those and not just the one. So I'm going to zoom back out. Keep a look at my alerts log. We are on a five second chart. So we're going to get alerts every five seconds for both the open and the close. And it's going to tell us the current close price and the open price of that particular candle that just ended. So here we go. Should show up any second now. There we go. It takes a little, uh, it takes a few moments for it to kind of get created on the back. I and mean, you can see our alerts coming through here. That was our close and this is our open. Now, if we wanted to take this a step further and we wanted to reduce these, we could obviously put the close price and the open price in one single alert. I just wanted to show you, man, my head is in the way. Uh, I do apologize. Let me move this over further. I just wanted to show you that this will create two alerts every single time. And I want to actually uh, pause this alert because that's making way too many alerts. Uh, anyway, it'll create two, one for each alert that you have on there. If you only want to call an alert in a specific instance, you're going to have to use some logic such as an if statement uh, in, in order to do that. So let's go back to this. And I'm not going to go over exactly what's going on here, but if you want to check out how this stuff actually works, look at my Pine Script tutorial video for functions. You can see we use a function here, and also there's a couple more. But anyway, really what's going on here is this script is only plotting a simple moving average for the closed price over the last 14 periods, but then it's calling these functions to check the SMA, check the RSI, and check the momentum indicators. Now, let's go up, take a look at the RSI here. It's calculating our RSI, and it's calculating whether or not it's using another function that, that's built in, I should say. Call crossover and cross under to see if the RSI started above or below either position and crossed above or below, respectively, uh, those particular values. If it did cross over, if the crossover is true, then in that particular case, it will call the alert. So it's only going to call an alert for the RSI crossing over if in fact the RSI crossed over and then you can have particular messages for the RSI. And in this case, it's going to print the actual value of the RSI because you have your underscore R variable that we use to store the value of the RSI over the last seven periods. So then of course, if you have crossed over or crossed under, excuse me, if this is also checking for the cross under, it's gonna fire an alert there. You'll notice there is no situation here in this trigger RSI function where it's going to call an alert if there wasn't a crossover. So that's how you would get your scripts to not fire an alert constantly, every single bar closed. And it's also important to note that there are different frequencies here that you can use. 
we were using once per bar close. And on this, you can use alert frequency once per bar. So it's a little bit different. With the once per bar close, it means it's waiting for the bar to close before it even checks to see if that alert should be fired. So if it is not the closing tick on the bar, then it's not going to fire the alert regardless of whether it would have otherwise with the logic. So keep that in mind. If you do it this way though, it can fire it within the first second of the bar if you're even looking at a daily or a weekly chart. But that might be what you want. Say you're being really specific with your RSI and you want it to cross under 10, something really low like that. Well, that might not happen by the time the candle closes, but maybe it goes down to seven or eight sometime during the day and it bounces up. Oh, excuse me. Uh, so you can say it bounces up. So it might not ever close below an RSI of 10, but if you check to where your alert can fire once per bar instead of once per bar close, you might be able to catch that move within that particular candle. So just a little bit of logic there to help you with that. And of course, they've got another one here. Uh, this one is fairly similar, but they changed the message that you have. You can see there's a little bit more information going on in here. Um, no, let's see. In this example, the values of one RSI indicator are checked, but on five symbols at once. The script alert will be triggered if RSI crosses a specific level for any of the symbols. Okay, so this is a single alert for five symbols. So it's looking at all of these different symbols, but it's still using that same function. It'll fire an alert uh, for all of those in that particular case. Again, not gonna dig into that too much, but we've pretty much covered everything that I wanted to in the particular video today. Again, make sure you check out the what's new section on TradingView so you can see these updates. You'll get a little badge notification up here when there is something new posted. And of course, you can always just wait a few days and I'll probably post a video about it and you'll be able to see that here. But uh, you also got to see some of these other things. Well, there was one other thing. I do apologize. Uh, this shows an example to where you can use alerts in a strategy. So these dynamic alerts are also available in a strategy. But what's important when you work with strategies is you have other information available to you. There we go, there's the zoom. You can even use the trade ID and other information that you might have specific to your strategy. And this also shows an example of where you would change your messages here uh, based on kind of what's going on. So lots of really interesting things. This is linked in that article. I just kind of forgot to mention it earlier down here towards the bottom. Yeah, this script shows you how to use that in a strategy. So shout out to who was it? Um, Peter O for that particular script so that you can learn how to do that. But that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to have a few more coming up soon and hopefully we'll be able to finish up all the work on that fancy Bollinger Band strategy. Uh, update that and get some of those changes underway so that that can be completed and perhaps move on to a similar strategy for the moving average. So that's it for the video. If you like the video, you've watched this far, I appreciate it. Please leave a like on the video. And while you're down there, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, because if you've watched the video this long, You'll probably like some of the other videos that we do here and uh, you'll get notifications hopefully when those videos do come out. But again, thanks for watching everyone. Have a great day.